Hey, it's Harcourt from Play, and today I'm going to show you how you can add a native tab bar to your project in Play. So we're creating the clock app right now. And right now I'm on my first tab, which is the world clock tab. And I want to add my tab bar. So I'm going to select my full page here. And on the page, if you go to the attributes panel on the right side of the screen, you'll see a new panel called navigation. And on this panel, you'll see this property called tab bar. And by switching that on, you'll add a tab bar to your page. So it's added to the page and you can see this sub panel has also popped up and the items that are here in this first property are also the items that match on the tab bar down here. And you can edit each different part of each of the items. The first one is the icon that you'll see when the item slash tab is unselected. So for this first one, world clock, we can click and we can search globe to find a world clock and we can add that icon right there. The second icon here is going to be the icon that appears when the object or when the tab is selected. So in this case, it's actually the same icon. So we'll add that in both places. Next is the title. And so in this case, the title is world clock. You'll just click on the title and you can type it in because it's a text field. Next, you'll find the more menu. And when you open this more menu, you'll find three options. First, you have the option to duplicate. You also have the option to delete, and those are pretty self-explanatory. The third one is the edit badge. So when you click on this, a pop-up will appear and it'll let you enter any characters you'd like, but it suggests a number here because this badge is that red notification dot. So let me show you what I mean. So we're making this world clock icon here and I'll put one. So saying maybe I have one notification here. And when I press enter, you'll see that little red one pops up on top of this world clock icon on top of this one item here. And if we remove that again, then it will disappear. So you just have to set that pop up to blank if you don't want um, the badge to be there anymore. Each item also has a link and this functions like a go to page action. So we can click on this link and we can choose the page that we would like it to navigate to when you tap on this tab item. So this one's world clock, so we obviously want it to go to the world clock. The last piece of the items property is adding a new item. So you can do that by clicking on this plus icon there, and you'll see that a new item has been added to the bottom. And when you look at the actual tab bar, you can see a fourth item has been added and it's spaced out evenly, exactly how you would expect it to be in a native tab bar. Now I'm gonna take a second and I'm going to fill in the rest of these tabs. So you can pause this video, take a second, fill out those tabs and meet me back here and we'll talk about the blur effects and customization and then we'll try it out on our phone. Now that we have all the tabs set up, we're gonna go into the blur effects. And for this, we're using materials that you've already seen in play. So you have default, all of the extra light blurs, and then you also have the system materials here as well. So you can choose any of these. You can experiment with them, see which one you like the best. Lots of options here. I think for me to match this, I'm gonna do dark. But now you can see that all of my icons are blending in with the background a little bit, and I don't love that. Luckily, you can change that as well with this customized property down here. By clicking on the right side, this pop-up will appear and you can customize each different part. So we can change the color for the selected icon. I want it to be orange. We can also change the color for the unselected icon. So I want this to be a nice gray color. You can also change the background color for the whole tab bar, and this color will blend in with the blur effect. You can also remove that because it doesn't really match my design here. Next, you have the item position. You can choose if you want them to be spaced auto, if you want to fill the whole space, or if you want them to be centered. When your items are positioned in the center, then you can change the width to get a little bit more customized in terms of the spacing between each of the objects. And lastly, you have your title gap, and this is going to be the gap between the object, or sorry, between the icon and the title. So you can space those out, you can make them really close together or make them auto. So a lot of flexibility here in creating this tab bar. So now we have this on one page. I'm going to go back to auto just so it matches what we're trying to create over here. And awesome. I think the tab bar looks great now. The really cool thing about the tab bar here is that it can be applied to all of the different pages. So right now we're on the world clock page, but we can go to the stopwatch page instead. And you'll see right now, there's no tab bar here. But if I select my whole page, again, go to the attributes panels to this navigation panel and turn on the tab bar, you'll see that the tab bar that we just created on the world clock page now applies here as well. And because we set up those links, Play automatically knows that the stopwatch page is attached to the stopwatch tab. So you can see automatically stopwatch is selected there when for world clock, world clock is selected. And we could do the same thing with the timer here, select this whole page, add the tab bar, timers is on, 
And last but not least, we'll add it to the alarms page as well. And that's how easy it is to add a native tab bar to your project in Play for Mac OS. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I can't wait to see what you create using our new tab bar feature.